Have you always dreamt of smoking the perfect rack of ribs that will impress your family and friends? In this video, I'll show you exactly how to smoke a rack of ribs right in your own backyard. And I'll share a few techniques that'll make these ribs super flavorful along with a pro seasoning secret that'll blow your mind. Trust me, you'll wanna stick around to turn these ribs into the star of your next barbecue. But first, let me address the question. You might be wondering why we're doing it this way. Well, the answer is simple. This method creates juicy, smoky ribs meant for casual enjoyment and not those overly sweet competition ribs. We want ribs that are bursting with flavor and will be devoured at our backyard get together. So grab your apron and let's get cooking. All right, let's check about the difference between competition ribs and backyard ribs. Competition ribs are usually super sweet and slathered with lots of butter, making them look amazing on the plate. But here's the thing, they can be a bit munch. Sure, they taste great, but you might only want one bite because they're so rich. Now, backyard ribs are a whole different story. These ribs are all about balanced flavors. You want to taste the meat, the smoke, and just the right amount of seasoning. Our goal is for the natural flavors to shine through and a perfect smoky taste that keeps you coming back for more. All right, let's get our ribs ready for the smoker. First up is trimming. Today I'm working with some beef back ribs, but don't worry, this method works for all kinds of ribs, like pork ribs, spare ribs, and baby backs. Basically, any type that you can think of. Trimming is super important. We want to remove any excess fat and those little bits of meat. This helps the ribs cook evenly and lets all those delicious flavors shine through. Plus it makes handling the ribs a breeze. So it won't have any annoying bits getting in your way when it's time to dig in. Now, let's talk about the membrane. You might be asking yourself whether to take it off or not. My tip, just score it. Scoring the membrane is quicker and gives you awesome results. All they have to do is cut shallow lines in the membrane and this will let the smoke and the seasoning soak in better without losing any of those juices. It's a simple trick that really boosts the flavors. So let's wrap up our trimming and scoring so we can get to the tasty part. It's time to make our ribs taste amazing with some seasoning. We're keeping it this step super simple. Just grab some good old sea salt and some freshly cracked pepper. Trust me, this combo is essential because it really lets the natural beef flavor shine through. The salt pulls out the juices while the pepper adds a nice kick. Plus, sticking with the simple seasoning maximizes how well the smoke can soak into the meat, giving you those delicious smoky flavors we all love. If you're feeling adventurous, you can always add some complex flavors later on, like garlic powder or rub during the cooking process. But for now, let's stick with our salt and pepper to set the stage for some mouth watering ribs. And let's dive into the smoking process. First, let's set our smoker to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. This lower temperature is perfect for building that rich smoke flavor. If the temperature were higher, say around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the applewood chunks would burn instead of produce the smoke, which we definitely don't want. Once the smoker is ready, let those ribs hang out for about four hours. Yeah, I said four hours. By the end of this time, the ribs will have absorbed as much smoke flavor as they can. Let's bust the common myth, the traditional 3-2-1 method. Some folks think it works perfectly, but it often leads to overcooked ribs. Instead, we're using our modified approach for the best results. We want juicy, tender ribs, not mushy ones. And here's where protein coagulation comes in. Now that's a big word, but it's really just a fancy term that means that as the ribs cook, the proteins tighten up, creating that pullback we talked about earlier. This process is super important because it affects how our ribs look and feel. When you see that perfect pullback, you know you're well on your way to some amazing ribs. Oh, and by the way, if you're new to backyard barbecue, want a little extra help with cooking times and temperatures, I've got a free guide that'll make things super easy for you. It covers everything from meats to veggies and it's perfect for just getting started. Just drop a 100 in the comments and I'll send it your way. All right, now let's talk about keeping those ribs nice and juicy. This is where our magic spray comes in. We're using a simple mix of 50% pineapple juice and 50% water. This combo works wondrous. It prevents the ribs from developing a burnt crust while keeping them super juicy inside. So when should we start spraying? The best time is after about three hours of smoking. By then, your ribs should have a beautiful color and a slight surface dryness, making it the perfect moment to add some moisture back in. And here's a little tip. During the last hour of cooking, spray those ribs every 15 to 20 minutes. This is when they'll really soak up the flavor and stay tender. Trust me, this step makes a big difference in how your ribs turn out. Now, let's talk about the secret ingredient that'll elevate your ribs, beef tallow. You might be asking, why beef tallow? Well, here's the deal. When you smoke beef tallow alongside your ribs, it boosts that amazing smokiness and adds moisture. This makes your ribs super juicy and tender. 
just what we're aiming for. So how do you smoke this game-changing ingredient? It's really easy. Just grab a saucepan and place the beef tallow in it. Set the pan right on the smoker while your ribs are cooking. Let it hang out there for the entire cooking time. As it melts, the tallow will soak up all that wonderful smoke flavor, which you can brush onto the ribs later for extra flavor boost. Trust me, this step is a total game changer for both flavor and texture. All right, now we're moving on to the wrapping stage. And this part is important for making your ribs extra tasty. Here's the scoop. Wrap your ribs in foil with that smoked beef tallow we just talked about. This isn't just a fun step, it helps keep the ribs moist and adds even more smoky flavor. Think of it like a cozy blanket for your ribs. Next up, it's time for a temperature check. You want to make sure that your ribs are perfectly cooked, so keep an eye on the internal temperature. Use a meat probe to check for doneness. If it slides in easily, you're all set. Just be careful not to overcook them. Now, let's discuss some common pitfalls. One big mistake is wrapping your ribs too early or leaving them wrapped for too long. If you wrap too soon, you miss out on that nice bark we all love. But if you wrap them too long, they can turn mushy. So keep a close watch on those ribs and wrap them at just the right moment for the best results. All right, we reached the best part, serving up those delicious ribs. First, let's take a look at the texture. The perfect rib should be juicy, but still hold its shape when you cut into it. You want that nice bite, not falling apart, but definitely tender. Just looking at these ribs, you can tell the deep smoke flavor is going to hit you right away and the seasoning is perfectly balanced. This is what backyard barbecue dreams are made of. Now that you know how to smoke a rack of ribs that will wow everyone at your next barbecue, it's time to put these techniques to use. I'm sure that you remember how I mentioned that beef tail adds moisture and richness to ribs. But do you know how to make beef tail? Let me tell you, it's super easy and it's a fantastic ingredient to keep on hand as it gives your barbecue recipes an incredible depth of flavor and moisture. So click on the video right here and learn how to make this delicious beef tallow at home. I'll see you there.